Um, so, I, talk will be in two parts. I'm going to talk a little bit about where Open Frameworks comes from, and then a bit about my own work. And um, it's actually really crazy to be giving this talk and have all these other developers here. And these are also collaborators, and we work together. So, it's this strange thing of like, I'll be showing projects that I work on with the people in this room. And, uh, but hopefully, you can get a feeling for what this community is about. Um, the, the first thing that I want to talk about is this, this idea. So, I, people ask me what I do for a living. And I never feel very comfortable to say that I'm an artist. And what I want to say is that I'm a researcher. And I will make this argument that artistic practice is a form of research. Just like other forms of research, that artists are researchers. That artists, that in the work that they're doing, are working on um, the, the work of other people that have came before them. The same way, for example, a car company would have an R&D department, right? research and development. A car company would have a department thinking about cars of the future, that artists are a kind of R&D department for humanity, that artists are thinking about a kind of possible future for, for people. Uh, I write software. Actually, all of the people that you're going to hear from in this lecture series, we, we write software to make the work that we make. But I like to think about software and technology the same way you think about breathing. You're not conscious of the fact that you're breathing. And in the work that I do, I don't want it to be consciously about technology. And a lot of the work that I do, and I'll, I'll, I'll talk about it, my, my, my background really, um, really is about drawing and gesture, and about the idea of um, building these sort of, uh, these drawing tools, these drawing systems, and, and a lot of the projects I'm going to show you relate to drawing. Um, so I'll, I'll talk about that when I, I get into my work. Um, and I, I create different projects, installations. I, Golan and I have collaborated for a ver very long time, creating performances and installations. And out of that collaboration really was, was born this project called Open Frameworks, which is, is essentially, uh, uh, we call it an open source framework for creative coding in C++. But basically, it, you can think about it as a kind of toolkit, as sort of building blocks of code that you can reuse and reshape. Um, it's this kind of tools that you can use to build the things that you want to build. Um, we, we call it C++ for non-nerds. Um, uh, and see, really, it's like kind of C++ for artists, for people that are thinking creatively in code. And Golan mentioned other toolkits. But really, there's a kind of, uh, um, there's really like a, an amazing outgrowth of these tools for people that want to do creative work um, with, with computers, with technology, with code, with software. Um, and the most important thing, and the most important idea about open frameworks is that it's use-driven. It comes from the act of building. We take the things that we learn and put it back into the tools. Right? We make these projects and we learn different things about different sensors that we're using or approaches to the work that we're doing, and we find ways to distill it down into reusable tools. And that's a really kind of important extension of this idea of research. If you're performing research, how do you publish the results of your research? And open source seems like a really good way to publish. You can think about it the way we describe it as a kind of glue. It's a glue for different libraries. Um, and it's a very small uh, amount of code. It's getting bigger, actually, uh, day by day. But it's a, it's a, it's a small amount of code. It's, it's readable code and hopefully very legible code um, that should allow you to do very, things very easily. So for example, load in a movie, tell it to play, draw it on the screen. It's just a few lines of code. And then we've written code, and there are also these libraries that we call on. So it's a kind of uh, a layer that wraps up libraries that are useful for doing things like graphics and sound and playing video and doing, I don't know, computer vision and, and other things. Um, I develop it together with uh, Theo Watson, who's here, I guess, in the back, um, and, and Arturo Castro. Uh, Theo and I are standing in, in front of a project that he made, which I think he may talk about called Laser Tag. But for me, this is a really um, a kind of fine example of what you can make with this toolkit. This is combining a projector, a camera, software, and very bright, illegal lasers and actually allowing you to draw on a building. And the first, when I saw this, I thought, I was really amazed at the kind of the power of, of where you can take software um, and you can take it, you know, from the screen actually onto a building in, in public space in such a way which really, really blew my mind. The most exciting thing about Open Frameworks for, for me is that, you know, every day I wake up and go to Vimeo, go to YouTube, go to Flickr, and you can see this just kind of crazy work that people in the community are doing, really beautiful projects. 
Um, th this is one of my favorite projects. This is by an artist, Chris Seguru, who I'll talk about li later. Um, and she's one of the kind of amazing female developers Golan was talking about. Chris made this project called D uh, Delicate Boundaries. And here there's a screen. There are bugs on the screen. And when you put your hand next to the screen, the bugs actually come off of the screen onto your hand. And we always talk about artwork that's leaving the screen. And I can't think of a better metaphor or project to describe the act, the act of leaving the screen of, as something that actually comes off of the screen. This is a project um, by two, uh, a couple um, based in Spain, La La Lab, and they created this project which actually swaps faces in video stream. So it puts your face on somebody else's body, and it is completely fucked up. It's, uh, it's, so, it's so scary, actually. Um, this is a project by Chris O'Shea. Uh, uh, I call it um, Out of Bounds, and it was installed in the London Design Museum. And here, using an infrared torch, you can see the Out of Bounds area through the wall. We've been using it at a place called iBeam. iBeam is based in New York, and it's an art science research center. And we've been doing workshops there, having different events. Um, I was a fellow there. Um, and, uh, and different, different groups have been using it. Um, this group, Norti, have been building a kind of open source multi-touch table using open frameworks. One of my favorite projects was created by um, Friedrich Kirchner, who was also a fellow at iBeam, and he created this project which is called Ink Scanner. And this is basically using a pool of black liquid, and you wear white clothing and you get descended into black liquid. You're, and the, the software is taking photographs of you as you descend and it actually builds a 3D model of your body um, just by taking sequential photographs and then stitching them together. Um, and it's you know, pretty crazy. To, um, okay, I, oh, it's, it's so embarrassing. Okay, so Todd, this is a project by Todd <laughs> Vanderlin, who's over there, um, called AR Vinyl. This is a, uh, And uh, Todd, well, Todd will talk about his work, but he's doing really amazing work in Boston. Um, this is a, a project which I love called Big Screams. And in this project, um, you call in, and when you call in, you get a character. This is created by e Eli, um, can never say his last name. Zen, uh, El, El, sorry, Ellie. <laughs> we'll have to overdub the video. Um, but an amazing project created by uh, um, uh, a, a good friend of ours, and uh, or his na nickname is Prisoner John. He's also a, a, a collaborator for Open Frameworks. In this project, you call in and you get a character, and the louder you scream, the bigger your character gets. <laughs> so I love projects that encourage pandemonium. Um, this project, are you gonna you gonna yeah. show this? Okay, I won't show this. But <laughs> just say that this project is awesome. Um, and Zach's going to show it. Um, and we also have it working on the iPhone and, and um, iPad and now also on Android. So you can take the same sort of experiments, the same sort of things that you're doing f uh, you know, in, in public space on the screen and also have them on devices that you carry around. And I'm sure Zach's going to talk about a lot of the great work that he's been doing. Um, if people have been building all, all kinds of stuff. Are you going to show this to you? Oh, okay, so um, actually Theo made this project as a response to Todd Vanderlyn's AR Vinyl. So I really, we also have this kind of, there's a great energy of sort of call and response with people making different projects. So. Uh, uh, this is a little app I made this morning as a response to Todd Vanderlyn's uh, augmented reality record player. So check it out. So people ask the question, you know, why are you invested in open source? What, what, what interests you about open source or why are you doing this? And I think the, the answer, one answer I would give is that, you know, if you tell people that you're making art, if I tell like my grandmother, for example, that I'm an artist, people have an, an idea of an artist as um, somebody who, who is this solitary genius, who's misunderstood, who's working alone in an attic, who's fighting against society. Um, and I think we really need to fight against this. I'm a big, I, I said before that, 
that art is a laboratory, and that I, I really do believe the best kind of art making is the one where we're working together, where we're collaborating. Um, and so there's, there's been re this really big push for DIY, do-it-yourself culture. I'm a big av advocate for DIWO. Um, we talk, I talk about this a lot, do it with others, um, as the kind of the new do DIY. So we do a lot of this sort of um, DIY, sorry. I don't know what Voltron's doing in that. Uh, so we do, a, we, we, we do a lot of workshops and events, and, um, and, and we, we, we sort of form, yeah, I guess Voltron, I, I don't know. <laughs> so, oh yeah, okay, so we do a lot of these events like um, this uh, Interactivos event, which is a two-week workshop where people come and they, they apply with projects w which haven't been built yet, um, and then we hang out and we build them, and it's almost like curating an exhibition of work that doesn't exist, and we've done this in, in all different cities, actually Arturo just taught one in uh, Brazil, um, and this is a kind of traveling two-week uh, workshop. Um, that we've done in, in, New, in New York, in Mexico City, in Brazil, and in a variety of places. We create these um, places for people to come together and make projects. We even have a gang sign. So I think if you have a group, you need to have a gang sign. So this is the Open, <laughs> the open Frameworks gang sign. You can get a feel for it. This is a, um, you can see everybody gets it, except for this girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, she's got it. Um, and we create laboratories too. So this was, for example, at Ars Electronica, we created this kind of uh, open frameworks laboratory. They invited us to create a lab in the, in the um, Bruckner House, which is a, um, a kind of big center there. Um, and so we created this lab out of scaffolding, and we put out this call saying, you know, come join the, the OF lab. And, um, and, uh, and we, it was amazing, it was this space was constructed literally over the course of a week. Um, they built this crazy laboratory. Um, and uh, we worked with an amazing artist named Tae Yoon Choi who created all the graphics and visuals for this lab. Um, and basically it became this sort of place where we were working. On the ground floor was an exhibition area where you could, uh, the audience could actually write on this whiteboard and then take a photograph of themselves holding these, these uh, five words. And then there was actually a hole in the floor. Can you see this? Yeah. Or sorry, a hole in the ceiling here where they would pass the idea up to the second floor. And then there were security cameras. They could see us working upstairs. There's uh, Friedrich who made the ink scanner. And then there was an exhibition area where they could see the works that we had made. And then on the second floor, um, we were sort of hanging out working. Um, so you can see we created this kind of crazy workspace. Um, and they, there's the hole in the floor. So usually somebody would be sleeping here, and then an idea would come up, and then the people would go to work. Um, and we even had a water cooler. <laughs> Uh, but what, what is amazing about this kind of, it, yeah, and there, there was a lot of beer involved, and, um, and we had these white lab coats, and we ran around and had fun. But what's amazing, I think, about this kind of situation is the sort of learning and the sharing that happens. And that's exactly the same kind of energy that is happening in the um, studio for Creative Inquiry this week. I mean, it's, it's actually m many of the same people um, as well, this kind of core group uh, coming together. But what's amazing is creating these places for people, people to come together and share ideas. Um, and lots of interesting projects. Um, this is something that Theo made, which was... Um, Like for for me, when you know, so people say like well, you know what is open frameworks about? Um, for 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 us, for me, for, for, I think it's really about community. It's about this community of people. It's about this community of hackers and artists and people experimenting, coming together, sharing work, sharing ideas. And that's why we're so happy and fortunate to be here in Pittsburgh. Um, okay, so part two. I'll talk a little bit about my work. I'm going to kind of go, go on fast forward. I might show I'll, show, I'll skip a few projects, I'll show a couple, and then, what's up? Yeah. So um, this is a project called Drawn. So I told you my interest is in drawing. My background is in fine arts, and I studied painting and printmaking. And this project is really about painting. And the idea is that I would be on stage, and I would be painting, and the audience would see what I was painting behind me. 
And it was inspired by the work of Thomas Edison and John Stuart Blackton. This is a, a film from 1905 called The Enchanted Drawing. And here, they create the illusion of a drawing actually coming off of the paper. And it was also inspired by the work of the Portuguese artist Helena Almeida. Helena Almeida would show, take black and white photographs and add blue paint. So here, she um, paints a blue dot, picks it up, eats it, and cries blue tears. And I love this idea of paint as something you could touch. So the way this performance worked is that I would be on stage painting, and then I could actually touch what I had painted. And I performed together with a Japanese musician named Pardon Kimura. <laughs> So the idea is that I would, I would paint something and then I could touch what I had painted. That I, I would paint it and then it would actually come off of the paper. And there was something really amazing. So we were touring, we're touring in Japan, and after every performance, the audience would come up and they would want to try the, the, the performance. So I decided to create a version for people to try themselves. And a lot of the work that I do goes back and forth between a performance where you can take somebody on a journey. It's like, you know, you have a, a, a structure in time and an installation where you're inviting anybody to become a performer. And I think, I, I love this idea of going back and forth. So um, this was an installation where anybody could come and, and paint and actually try the, the drawing. And this project actually, um, I was developing this around probably around the same time that Theo was working on laser tag. And these were sort of early tests of open frameworks. These were projects that we were developing very early on in, in kind of OF history. And so anybody can come and, and play and interact. So I'll show you just a quick video of what this looks like. different behaviors, um, very popular with kids. And there's something that I notice when I watch people use this installation, and I call it the open mouth phenomenon. And I got really obsessed about this idea of open mouth. Um, so I want you to pay attention to this girl. This is number one. This is in a festival called Cinekid, for, for a festival for children, uh, a kind of media festival for children in Amsterdam, which is really an amazing place. So number one, number two, you can see the finger kind of entering, number three, and number four. This, this is the, what I call the open mouth phenomenon. And um, Evan Roth, who is a, another a kind of friend and collaborator of mine, um, he calls this the holy fuck moment. And I, I call it the open mouth moment. But I think we were talking about the same thing. And really, I will make the argument that as an aesthetic strategy, like my, it's these kind of moments that, that we want to create, um, which are, uh, they're sort of pathway to somebody's heart. It's a way to reach people when, when they open their mouth. Um, uh, okay. Um, the IQ font, I'll show this project. Um, this is a collaboration that I created um, together with, uh, with two typographers and a stunt driver. And the idea was that the, um, it was for an advertising firm for Toyota, and Toyota has this car, which is a, um, it's one of these small smart cars um, called the IQ. And people believe that you can't drive these cars really quickly, because they're really tiny, that if you drive them fast, they're gonna tip over. So we wanted to create a video of somebody driving it really in a crazy, fast way. Um, and the idea we had was to actually design, design a typeface letter forms that would be driven by this um, by the stunt driver. So we designed a typeface that could be, could be driven. Um, and I wrote software that actually tracked the car from above. So we did a lot of kind of experimentation to figure out what it would be like to put colored dots on the car and see if we could write software that would track the car in real time so that the driver could have feedback. We did really funny experiments like 
um, seeing you know how what what size dot we could track. Um, and this poor guy Ramin actually just ran around all day um, in front of the camera creating this test footage. Um, but in the end, we were we were able to successfully track the car, um, and we mounted a camera really high, put the dots on the car, and then this stunt driver drove, and uh, and I wrote software that tracks the the colors and creates the data that then the typographers use to create the font. And the driver is totally crazy, like su super ridiculous. He did a lot of wipeouts and he drove letters backwards. But what's amazing, what, what was what was beautiful about it is that you can download, you can actually download the font, and the letter forms themselves have the char they have the characteristics of the car. They're not, they couldn't be hand drawn. They actually had to be driven in this automobile, um, and that's something like. I find it really exciting about the, 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 these kind of work and collaborations is that you find yourself doing the craziest things, that it's really custom software. We're not designing a Photoshop for, for um, you know, it's not like a, 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 a really like a general purpose app, but it's really like a super extremely one-off, you know, track a car and make a font um, app. Like, how, how many times are you going to use that? Um, uh, so. Uh, super quickly, uh, I'll skip skip the other projects. I'll end with the last project, project really dear to my heart, called the iWriter. This is a collaboration between uh, Chris Agru, who's the artist I mentioned, who created the bugs that come off the screen onto your hand, and Theo Watson, um, who uh, we, we work on the Open Frameworks project together, and uh, Evan Roth and James Potterly. Evan is. Um, Evan and James are part of the uh, Graffiti Research Lab, or founders of the Graffiti Research Lab, looking at the intersection of graffiti and technology. Um, and the five of us collaborated with a sixth artist named, uh, named Tempt. Tempt is an old school graffiti writer from LA, um, really an amazing kind of le legend in LA, who's been doing kind of beautiful uh, graffiti work um, kind of pretty much all around uh, LA and uh, California, and about Five years ago, was walking down the street and fell over and was diagnosed with a disease called ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease. So now he's completely paralyzed. Um, he can, he's on a machine that helps him breathe. And we went out to LA to meet him. We were invited to, to you know, try to find a way to collaborate with him. We went out to LA to meet him and show him the work that we do and these kind of projects, this sort of cu culture that we're a part of, um, and get to know him and his, uh, his family and his caregivers. Um, when we went out there, he, he has a um, commercial eye tracker. Here he says, dude, my heart, where is ghetto? Because um, this is a machine that he uses to communicate. He can type with it. Um, that, that's, that's pretty much it. He can type uh, messages with it. Um, but it it's re really wasn't design, designed to, um, for him to express himself. Um, and so he says, dude, my hardware is ghetto. He could also be saying, dude, my hardware is expensive, because these are really expensive devices. This is, uh, um, they range between uh, ten and twenty thousand dollars, and this is uh, kind of on the higher end. Um, these are very expensive device devices. So we went out there to, 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 to get to know him. Um, this is a project, that, or this video is narrated by his father. There, because he Otherwise referred to as AOS. He is not able to move, uh, his limbs, or eat, or talk, or uh, move any part of the body. Uh, and so, but however, his brain is wide awake and he's just full of ideas and creativity. And uh, so it's a um, fortunate thing you guys have been introduced to lots of this. What we've been doing is really trying to learn as much as we can about eye tracking, about the hardware and the software that goes into eye tracking, um, designing t tools, um, also writing software for his system and so that we can learn more about how the commercial systems work so we can try to design uh, better uh, open source software. And what we've been doing, it we've come up with an open source, um, an open hardware toolkit for eye tracking. Um, really designing these sort of uh, low-cost DIY tools that you can build for um, for eye tracking. 
Uh, and we, in order to do this, we created a kind of laboratory, again, where we sort of hung out and work and, and act and build, build stuff. This is the first version of the iWriter project. Um, and you can see on the left side, we're really thinking about hardware, on the right side, thinking about code. The lower left, you can see our Kanye eye tracker. Uh, <laughs> that didn't work very well. James James modeling the first version of the iWriter. Um, and then, in addition, this is really important, we were thinking about Temp's style, his love of letter forms, his, you know, his style, his voice, and trying to design software that's really for him, to allow him to express himself again. Um, and so here he is using the system. In order to draw, he draws by looking long enough. And he look, if he looks long enough, it's like plotting a point, like an illustrator if you click. Um, and then from making points, he can make lines. From lines, he can make letters. From letters, he can make words. Uh, oh, sorry. Yikes. So we built this system. Here's, here he is actually kind of using, um, using the, the first version of the system. Um, and, uh, and with those glasses, he's drawing these letters. And as soon as we had this system where he could draw, where he could, um, you know, uh, create his art again, we're thinking, what is the next step? And the next step for us was to go outside and project his drawings on the sides of buildings live so that he would be in the hospital room drawing and streaming back into the hospital. He could see the artwork that he was making. So it was a way for him of actually, um, it was a way for him of, of actually getting up in the city again. You know, he's living his life in this hotel room, but he's, actually, he's able to make art and his art is able to get out onto the street um, and uh, on the sides of the highways in LA. Uh, and uh, he said, that was the first time I've drawn anything since 2003. It feels like taking a breath after being held underwater for five minutes. And what's, what's incredible is that he's continuing to push the software in different directions. So he's making drawings with the software that we never even thought were possible. Um, really beautiful kind of uh, art that, uh, you know, I couldn't draw with my hands, let alone my eyes. And um, Every time he makes a drawing, they get saved online. So you can actually, we've had this situation where we've had a, a graffiti artist in Norway painting his drawings on the wall. Um, we've had lots of different types of collaborations. We sort of take his art wherever we can. This is in Japan. Um, and uh, the data from the drawings are also saved. So Golan um, set up, the, took the data and actually put it to a robotic arm and had a robotic arm drawing the tags. You can see the top uh, left corner, that's our dream, or that's Evan's dream. That's the, that what your thing was in response to that. Um. Uh, this last or last spring, I was teach I teach at uh, Parsons School of Design, and m my students. I taught a class where my students were looking at and hacking new versions of the iWriter. So really building it, getting to know the system, hacking the hardware, hacking the software, um, and that was really exciting. Also uh, testing with different people who you know need to use eye trackers, getting feedback about what works and what doesn't work. Um, and as a result of that, we have a new version of the iWriter called the 2.0. 2.0 design. Um, it's basically a different uh, physical design, and it was facilitated uh, also by Golan, um, also by the Studio for Creative Inquiry, um, who had us out, and Kyle was also out working on this kind of version two of the iWriter, um, which we've been taking and demoing and inviting other people to try kind of all over the place um, and getting feedback. Uh, and it's basically a kind of a more advanced version of the, of the iWriter, this low cost open source eye tracking system. Um, here's Tempt using the, the new iWriter. Graffiti Research Labs iWriter 2.0, all up in the mix. Yager. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, this is the, the, the last image from the iWriter project. This is a kid who was hanging out with us when we were building the iWriter. And he, he actually built his own version of the iWriter out of toys. So he found toys uh, around his house, and he was just walking around the whole day with his own version of the iWriter. And I, I like this image to suggest the power of art to inspire the next generation. 
that art has this power to inspire, to inspire children, to inspire the next generation to, to make things, but also the power of, of the individual. Um, because there are problems that exist in the world that companies are not going to solve and, and governments are not going to solve, but individuals and individuals working to, together and collaborating can, can work together to solve. The last image, and I'll end the talk with this image, these are two kids that came to the drawn installation um, when one of the first times that I set it up. And the reason I love this image is that it's really clear to see on their expression this, um, this, sense, th this feeling of not knowing what's going to happen. And this feeling of just not knowing at all what's going to happen. And I think that's what we have the power to do with this medium, is create um, situations and opportunities for wonder. Thank you.